Hello guys and welcome to the first long form tutorial I'm uploading to this channel. Uh, it's not going to be anything major, it's something quite basic actually. It's just how to make UIs look good. UIs meaning like frames, buttons, you know, all the basic stuff that you can put in a screen GUI. I'm going to be going over uh, three main things that I use in order to make my GUIs look good. Uh, if you saw the GUI showcase for Project Swift, I'll put the video up on screen right now. Uh, I use two major uh, GUI tactics, but I'll be going over three uh, because the third one's also really good, but I just don't need to utilize it considering I'm using mainly slightly transparent black frames for that GUI. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to be going over is UI corners. So if I create just a screen GUI and then like a frame, I don't really need to resize this frame because I'm just using it as like a show. Let's say I have a frame here, but it looks terrible because there's sharp corners and unless if you're going for like maybe a computery uh, setting or whatnot, it, having sharp corners on a UI kind of looks terrible. So what you usually want to do is just add a UI corner. Adding a UI corner already makes it look a lot nicer in my opinion, but you never really want to use offset. Offset is kind of stinky because if you don't know, offset uses a pixel count in order to define what it's being, uh, in order to define how sharp the corner will be or like how round the corner will be. What you usually always want to do is make the offset zero and then change the scale is the scale will scale it to the screen size so it's easier to explain with size here let me make it 0.1 so now there's a 0.1 corner scale on the frame but let me resize the frame just to show you guys what the difference between offset and scale is so if you look at si uh, size right here you got the 0 uh, comma 496 basically that this one thing right here is the x value and uh the first number is the offset or the scale rather the first number is the scale second number is the offset offset represents the number of pixels wide it is so if i change this to 200 it's going to be 200 pixels wide uh but i don't want that i want a scale so it scales with the screen so if i do 0.5 it will be half of the screen in the x direction which is you know if you look at a graph i hope you know what an x direction on a graph is uh hopefully you passed basic algebra but yeah and it's the same with the y the y here you can see scale of zero offset of 292 meaning it's 292 pixels up we don't want it to be any pixels up uh or defined on pixels rather obviously we want a y axis but if we make that 0.5 as well, it goes halfway up to the screen in the Y direction. And if I move it to the top of the screen, you can very much see that it takes up half the screen. If I move it all the way over to the left, it takes up half the screen in either direction. It might be a little hard to see because I added a UI corner and whatnot. Side tangent over. <laughs> the more long form tutorials I make, the more side tangents I'm going to go on, I feel like. It's fine though. But yeah, UI corner makes this, the corners look nice, you know? I use this a bunch. I usually rec always go for a 0.1 corner radius. Sometimes I'll go for a 0.2, uh, depending. And then sometimes I'll do a halfway in the middle and do a 0.15. But I don't usually ever go higher than 0.2 because I feel that's unnecessary. Like, I mean, just look at the 0.5. That's a loading bar. If you're using it for a loading bar, that makes sense. I've done that in the past as well. But other than that, using a 0.5 is kind of unnecessary or anything even higher than that. It won't even like budge. Yeah, let me set this back and then I'll show you guys the next uh, UI tactic I use, which is UI stroke. I actually have not been using this in the Project Swift GUI. Uh, and that's for the reasons I stated before. If you look up UI stroke, if I were to add, you could actually already see that there's a little back, a uh, little bit of a black line right there. There's two main stroke or two main ways a stroke can be applied. Contextual usually means it's going to apply it to text uh, rather than the border of it, which is why border is here. If you set it to border, it'll just be on the edge of it and it'll have a black line on the edge here. Let me make the thickness higher. 
uh, just so you guys can see it a little better. A little bit better. If I were to apply the text stroke into the text label, it would surround the text because it's contextual. It's not being asked to border it. If I put it on the border, then it will be on the border of the text, which, you know, that makes sense. It's named border for a reason. But if you want to have your text pop a little bit, you can have contextual and make like the thickness like one or something. I don't know. I don't usually ever put it on my text. Uh, I almost always put it on my borders because it looks nicer on borders than it does text in my opinion. But yeah, if you're putting it on a frame, you don't really need to worry about that. I would always just set it to border anyways, unless if you want it to be on something in the center of it. But you can do whatever you want. But yeah, uh, it, on, it just allows the UI to pop a lot more. The final way I'm going to be talking about making UIs look good is using a UI gradient. Now this I do use in every single one of my UI, uh, mainly because of how good it looks. So if I have a UI gradient here, let's say in order for the gradient to actually take effect, you have to click in here and then click the three dots and then click on like either one of these arrows and change the color to what you want the gradient to be. So like that kind of looks bad because it's uh, white into a darkish blue. I mean, you could probably make that work a lot easier, better, but in the short that I just uploaded, which was the settings UI short, I'm re I really like how that turned out. Although I could have talked less depressed. I don't know. If I were to make the background color of this frame something other than white, the gradient would stick. Why does it look like that? But yeah, the background color, let's say I made it this. Uh, and yeah, you can have the uh, gradient be whatever you want. And look how good that looks. Honestly, I really like how that looks. Actually, the color. But yeah, you have the dark slowly fading into the light. And it does this because if you don't change this to white, this basically, this off of white, it basically acts as a transparent or transparency, this first arrow. And then you choose what gradient you want it to be over here. Now you can implement an input, uh, another arrow and then make it so the gradient, like, change how far the gradient fades and whatnot um if you set it to be like that you can make the gradient like wait a little bit longer uh in order to take effect like that uh i don't really do that um i usually unless if i'm dealing with the black whoa that's not what I'm, that's not what I mean. that's also out of context stuff right there whatever so um i usually just keep the gradient the normal thing like i'll set the two colors and then i'll just leave it alone and whatnot uh but you can do whatever you want i mean some uh, a lot of people have you can do whatever you want um i mean st fashion style is subjective do whatever you want but yeah those are the three main ways uh you can make a ui look good you can apply these same ex all of these same exact things to buttons as well so if i were to make like a text button and uh i'm not gonna change the, the scale or the offset i already went on the engine but if i were to add like broke into it at the ui corner uh paste it into it and then gradient uh, you know, since I didn't change the uh, background color of the button, it's going to come out as white into the dark blue. If I were to change the uh, background color, like that, then it changes it. Um, and yeah, that's basically what you could do to make your stuff look good. Do that to buttons, you could do that to do, um, text box backgrounds, you do it to frames, you could do it to scrolling frames. The only thing I'm unsure of is image labels and image buttons um, because they deal with images and I don't think you can apply a gradient to those, but uh, you can apply a stroke to it and I think you can apply a cor corner as well. Yeah, you can apply corners to images. I just don't know about gradient because gradients deal more with like, background. Really. But yeah, thanks for watching this like super scuffed like kind of guide. 
through UI corner, UI gradient. I didn't really touch up on everything, but I mean, I assume you can tell like tra what transparency is, thickness, obviously. Uh, line join mode is kind of goofy, like, in general, so I wouldn't really touch that. I would always keep it round uh, for UI stroke, because if you do miter, it kind of looks like ass, unless if you're going for, like, an old effect. And then bevel is just, like, here. It, it just, just always go around, man. It just looks the best. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I hope I'll see you again soon. Uh, hopefully I didn't scare you off. Peace out.